Hi, this is John from the Ringlord. We're making a niobium Byzantine bracelet. We're using 18 gauge, 5 30 seconds inch niobium rings. And step one is just close a ring. And you can close the second ring. and put one ring through both of those rings and repeat and basically all we're making to start with is just a length of of two and two chain and we're going to make that five long, in other words, ten rings connected together, sort of two at a time. I'm just sort of picking random random colors as I go. This is a just a small part of the niobium color spectrum. And we'll talk a bit more about niobium as we go. Three long, as I said, this weave is well, this weave has has several names, but most commonly is called Byzantine, and that's Byzantine as in the the Byzantine Empire because yes this this weave is that old uh, and this configuration of, of jump rings has been used for, for jewelries, jewelry for for probably a, a thousand or two years. And we're at, oh, almost ready. Okay, we're done the, the section of two and two chain and ready for the next step. So for weaving of Byzantine there's really th about three steps and two of them are pretty much the same. In this step we're folding back the outer rings and then opening up the inner rings and then putting the next ring through those rings. And you're making sort of a, a box and this this box that you see is is the really the only component of of Byzantine chain. It's just a bunch of of stacked boxes. So if we can get a good view of this. And as all steps in in the Byzantine chain, when you when you do it once, you immediately do the same thing again. Everything, everything is doubled. And step two is just going through the last rings in more two and two chain. And of course, repeat. And step three is the same as step two. Through the last two rings. And repeat. And now we're back to step one again, which is the folding. And putting the ring through 
the inner set. And if you missed it that time, I'll I'll go through a few more a few more cycles. But as I'm doing this, let's talk a little bit about uh, about niobium. Uh, working with niobium is very very similar to working with sterling silver. It has a similar similar weight, um, a similar sort of hardness and and uh, and workability. Um, it actually looks great with used together with sterling silver, and it's also a similar value to 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 working to sterling silver. Uh, these colors that you see are not from any from any dyes or, or or color plastics. This is sort of a a naturally occurring color. A uh, niobium is called a reactive metal. And this color comes from a, I guess, a reaction with, with electricity in an electrolytic bath. So these colors are in the oh, about 73 to 85 volt range sort of combination. And other colors that we get include like bronze, blues, purples, uh, golds, and then more shades of rose and blue and green. Okay, going for this folding step again. And just a few notes on the on the ring closing. The rings are saw cut, so that means that they're missing a little slice. So as I'm opening a ring, and I doubt you're going to be able to see this very well, but as you're opening the ring you're pushing the ends together a little bit. And then when you close the ring, if I can just get this one in here. When you're closing the rings you want you want to have gotten rid of that little gap and have your rings close perfectly. Now we're at the just the boring stage where you're just you're just repeating and repeating the last couple of steps. If you've made it made a few of these, you can you can make these while uh, sort of talking to people, watching TV, even it takes fairly little concentration. But we'll just go over the. Uh, Adding a clasp and finishing. Now, let's see. Adding a clasp, I have a anodized titanium clasp. Titanium, a very very similar metal to niobium, lighter, stronger, harder to work with, uh, but no such thing as a as a niobium lobster clasp. So we're sticking with with titanium. So first of all, the we need to be at that stage where we're ready to flip back, back the rings. Just one ring through the clasp. And this is the method of attaching where you'll have the like, the, the cleanest line. Like you could you could I guess attach the clasp at any stage, but doing it at this point gives you the the cleanest look. If you want to work on this with a with a friend and you're both making pieces, like I had this little piece made made from before, you can connect two pieces by if, if you're if both pieces are at the spot where they're ready to flip back, you can you can connect them by flipping back both and trying to get two rings through. This is it's worth noting that this is that connecting the two pieces is more difficult than than making a chain. This first ring won't be bad, but that next ring is going to going to be difficult to to work.
in this case for well, particularly for someone who's doing this the first time, you've got a here's where you've got a real good chance of of damaging a ring. Uh, niobium is completely um, non-reactive with the body, like same as like titanium, platinum, solid gold. There's no danger of anyone having having allergic reactions. Yeah, this is definitely not not recommended to splice two pieces together. Just the uh, like in order to make a nice looking Byzantine, the rings are fairly small for the wire thickness. So that does mean that when you're trying to put one ring through four, ooh, and I didn't didn't scratch the ring. That was fortunate, but yeah no now I'm starting to scratch the ring, so so I would suggest not splicing two pieces together. I note that I didn't really have to double double this ring. I could have just put one ring, but you're mostly you're doubling the rings to give it this nice solid look. I'll give this one last try here. Now by doing that I'm putting all the stress on the next ring and yet yeah, opening the next ring up a little bit. In closing that ring, I did a little bit of damage to the weave around it. Okay, in, the, in that amount of time, I could darn near have woven that little piece that I thought I added. Uh, the the last thing that we'll cover, just ending your your weave. Uh, if you're making this for sort of a for someone who you don't know who's going to be wearing it, and you want to sort of make a one size fits uh, many. You can end it in a little tail. That tail can either be could be either be one and one chain, or uh, or two and two chain. Two and two chain being like just how we started the the Byzantine. Oh, we're at the flipping. So yeah, you could just continue on a piece of a piece of two and two, maybe an, an inch long, and you can the, the clasp can certainly connect through through the two rings, or you could switch to to one and one. Uh, I'd recommend going with the two and two. It just it gives you a more a more uniform look compared with the with with, with the chain, and it's stronger, which, which doesn't hurt. Um, however, since you're hopefully you're you're making this for, for yourself, uh, and in that case, you can make it exactly the right size, or or making it for someone who's, whose wrist you have available. Just make it exactly the right size, and in a in a single ring, just like this. And then your clasp can just obviously the wrist wouldn't be this small, but and there we go, sort of a fingering sized uh, sized bracelet. But I'm sure you can imagine it larger. All right, thank you.